as i'm discussing the mechanical injuries and this is the third lecture on laceration and in today's lecture i will be discussing the medical aspects of the laceration and the main objective is that we have to determine the nature of the injury that is it is anti mortem or post mortem and the timing of the injury the how old it is manner of infliction kind of weapon for laceration the weapon is usually blunt but by meticulous ex examination we can find out the weapon the origin of the weapon and the shape of the weapon also then i will also be discussing in this lecture the complications the pathophysiological effects that is the complications they are early complications and late complications the early complications most important are the hemorrhagic shock the uh, air embolism and injury to some vital organs in late complications infections fat embolism and the crush syndrome is the most important complication so today i'll be discussing these pathophysiological facts so i had to go to the lecture hello everyone i am dr javed ikbal khokar professor of forensic medicine and toxicology and we are discussing the mechanical injuries and this is the third lecture on laceration and in this lecture i will be discussing the medical legal aspects of laceration or the forensic importance of laceration the most important we have to know the anti mortem or post mortem nature of the laceration then timing of the injury that how old laceration is manner of infliction that is suicidal homicidal or accidental then the kind of weapon used from the uh, keen observation of the injury and the wound we can find out the shape in uh, the nature of the weapon kind of weapon and we'll be also discussing in this lecture the complication the pathophysiological effect the complications of the laceration so regarding anti mortem or post mortem nature of the laceration this can be from the gross examination that on naked eye experience the lacerated wound margins they are appear irregular torn and they are showing the vital reaction we do the histo histological histological examination and biological biochemical examination and histochemical examination these are the test with enzyme histochemistry with biochemistic analysis and histology we can find out the vital reaction and the amount of these enzymes and histo enzymes can be studied so whether injury is anti mortem or post mortem it will be showing vital reaction in the anti mortem lacerations like hemorrhage inflammation the hemoglobin in the blood it is going to stain the tissues and this staining will not be washed away by any means because it is adherent to the deeper structures there are signs of healing repair and inflammation anti mortem wounds are gaping due to contraction of the underlying tissues so regarding the timing of the injury the age of the injury can be assessed from gross examination histological examination biochemical examination and enzyme histochemistry so the same parameter which are applied for determination of the nature that is the anti mortem or post mortem the concentration of the biochemical and the enzyme will show the not only the nature whether anti mortem post mortem but they also depending upon their concentration will show the age of the injury on gross examination the color changes the healing and the repair will tell us about the time how much time has been lapsed and the microscopic examination the cellular evasion according to time can show us the time frame regarding the biochemical enzyme various biochemical test will show enzymes according to their type then different enzymes also show their concentration according to time enzyme histochemistry is done 
I will be discussing these uh, parameters, the enzyme histochemistry and the biochemical enzyme, when I will be summing up the whole traumatology and when I will be discussing in detail all these aspects. So we will be discussing in detail these factors. So the manner of infliction, it is accidental, homicidal or suicidal, but usually the lacerations are accidental and homicidal. Self-inflected lacerations are not seen. The examination of the scene of crime, circumstantial evidence, and injury of the weapon, injury of the uh, examination of the injury will decide. About the kind of weapon used, the lacerations have no definite shape because they are irregular and sometimes they are due to blow with any linear object, Y-shaped laceration with splitting at one end. So they tell us that the blow is tangential. If the impact is of an object which is blunt and square like hammer, it produces crescentic lacerations. If the weapon is blunt and rounded, a stellar shape laceration will be produced. Regarding the nature of the weapon, as uh, I have discussed that it is in linear, they are Y-shaped and blunt and square, they are crescentic and blunt and down, they are stellar shaped. Now, moving toward the pathophysiological effects or the complications. They are early complications and delayed complications. The early complications, the lacerations as they are open wounds, there is bleeding externally as well as internally, and sometimes the bleeding, bleeding is extensive and can lead to shock and may be fatal. So in early complication, the hemorrhagic shock is the most important and air embolism. If the air is sucked in from the vessels and it can cause the air embolism. Then injury to the vital organ. Some vital organ may be damaged because of the blood trauma and laceration and that can prove fatal. Then delayed complications are infections, fat embolism, and crush syndrome. In delayed complications, when the infection is there as it is open wound, so it becomes portal of entry of bacteria and become infected. Gram negative infections are more dangerous. The fat, when it is crushed, it may enter into the blood vessels and cause fat embolism. Then crush syndrome. The crush, crushing of the subcutaneous tissues and muscles will lead to release of acid metabolites leading to crush syndrome and acute renal necrosis or renal failure will occur. There is albumin urea, hemoglobin in the urine, there is oliguria and ultimately n urea. Finally, the uremia occurs and death is the ultimate fate. So differences between incised and lacerated wounds. The incised wound about the site, they can be anywhere in the body. Whereas the lacerated wound, they are usually on the bony prominences. The edges in inside wound, they are clean cut, whereas in lacerated wound, they are lacerated, that is racked and irregular and crushed. The bruising of the margins in inside wound, there is no bruising because the whole force is utilized in the cutting of the tissues. Whereas in lacerated wound, because it is blunt object crushing of the tissues, then the margins are the, there will be bruising. Then injury to the blood vessels in incised wound, they are clean cut, whereas in lacerated wound, the vessels are crushed. The hair bulb in incised wound, they are cut, whereas in lacerated wound, they are crushed. Bleeding is more in incised wound and less in lacerated wound because in lacerated wound, the vessels are crushed, whereas in incised wound, they are cut. So summary of this lecture is that in this lecture, we have learned the medical legal aspects of the laceration, that is the antemortem, postmortem nature of the injury, timing of the injury, manner of infliction, kind of weapon, and the complications.
The complications are the are either the early complications, early complications, and the late complications. The early complications are the shock, the air embolism, and the injury to the vital organs. And we have also learned that in late complications, there are infections, fat embolism, and crush syndrome. So thank you very much. This is all about the laceration. This was the last lecture. Take care. And we'll, next lecture, we'll be discussing the other uh, mechanical injuries. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And my channel name is Dr. Javed. Thank you very much.